All right, here's the bed that I did yesterday and I made the decision to plant out my azuratum because if I don't, I mean, it may already be that I've ruined it, but I've got two lots. I've got this here, as you can see, look, it's absolutely desperate to get outside. And I've got some which is a bit further behind, which is this. So I'm going to pop this on. But I'm definitely going to put these out because if I don't, they're going to die. And I need to make some more space. Um, so but one thing that's looking really nice, though, is my Rudabecki is. Look at those. Because it has gone really warm now. I mean, today is, look at the temperature here. Can you see that? There. Uh, well over 70, about 75 in here. So, I mean, the plants just love it in here at the moment. The heavy feeders, which is why they've gone yellow, but they should be good in that border because it's got loads of nutrients in there. I'd mentioned that I'm going to sow at least two of these, if not four as well, depending on how long the video gets. So I was thinking of growing this Bapurum straight into the bed because it will tolerate partial shade as well as these Gadisha. I haven't decided exactly yet if I'm going to do those and then I have this climbing snapdragon I have a violet and white which I was thinking of starting now for when the sweet peas are past their best or just to put up teepees where I don't have any sweet peas. So just before I planted up I did water the soil just to make sure it was nice and damp and like a glue so that the roots would stick, so that it would stick to the roots really more. And I also re-raked it because I didn't do a great job of it last night. I was running out of time. So I just loosened that up and flattened it as well and then firmed it down with this board. Uh, just to be super thorough, I also watered the plants because once I take those pots off, those roots are going to be exposed to these very warm spring temperatures and I don't want them to wilt or dehydrate. The main problems I've had with the azuratum from leaving them too much is that they are root bound and they are lacking in nutrients. So hopefully planting them out in this bed will fix that. I am going to plant them slightly closer than some people recommend because of the lack of sunlight. I think they'll grow taller and so I can probably fit more in more closely spaced if you like. Also, I'm growing them as a crop rather than a garden plant in a way. So I, I actually want to encourage them to grow together and fit as much in as I can in this space and they will hopefully support each other as well standing up. I did have a couple of leggy ones, uh, some of which I planted in between these and some of which I've just planted in pots around the garden. And then if they survive, they survive. If they don't, they don't, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. But these ones, I did try and pick the best ones for this bed here. When I got them out of the pot, I tried my best to get as much of the root ball uh, of that particular plant as I could. But of course they were massed and meshed together so I didn't always achieve as much root ball as I liked, but I'm figuring with this beautiful compost, these roots should ha have easy access to enough nutrients for them to recover. Anyway, I guess we'll soon find out. Just see me te so you can just see me teasing them apart here, and this larger one actually was released with more root. So they, they kind of ended up roughly with about as much root as there was plant. When I was planting them, I was really conscious of pushing the soil, uh, pinching the soil down underneath the crown of the plant so that the roots were gripped and anchored into the soil. In other words, so that the roots were touching soil and therefore had access to nutrients. I didn't just want them floating in a hole. This, this compost is new, it's all freshly dug, it's very loose, so I wanted to make sure that the roots actually had real contact with the soil. When you get a pot like this where the plant seems to be stuck, just squeeze the pot. Don't sort of tug and rip the root, the plant. 
squeeze the pot around just squeeze it like you would a lemon before you juice it and and generally the plant will come loose Here, there's baby birds in this bush here. Just behind it even. I think they're making a lot of noise because they don't like me being here. I won't be long. And the Gadesha six millimeters down. Right. Okay, so. And they're really fine these seeds. Um, like that look, you see, so I'll probably do a couple of rows. And you see here, and then I'll just drop them in like that. Obviously, thin them when they're done. I don't know if it's all going to go any ways there. That's actually quite a lot of seeds. I am going to just do another quick row here next door. Ah, you know what I haven't got? I haven't got any sticks. Just in case I get slug damage. And I'm going to do these ones this way. Okay. And let's see some stuff up here. Is any coming out here? Yeah. Oh, too many there. Okay. Two rows. Oh, I better mark the rows before I hide them. <laughs> water them in to make sure they have good contact with the soil. She's just going to surface sew them in the spacing that ultimately I want. So it's tempting to drill them in and just fill up this whole space. But they don't like being moved and they happily grow in a bit more shade than these other plants. So I think I'm just going to fill up this whole space and then that's another harvest, a crop I can harvest for cut flowers. Um, that's in a more shady area uh, where the more sun loving plants will not thrive. So, and here's the seeds here. And I'm going to surface sow them at a good distance in the remainder of the bed. It's naturally spacing like so. I don't need to use them all. I think I probably will actually. There we go. And then I'll harvest the seed, if nothing else, and at least there's enough there that there will be a decent crop if the slugs don't eat them. But I'm going to water them in. They don't want to be covered but I am going to water them in to make sure they have good contact with the surface of the compost. 
All right, that's it. I'm just going to cover them over with the chicken wire and obviously watch out for those slugs since the birds cannot get to the slugs on this bed if I put the chicken wire over. But I have to put the chicken wire over to protect them from the pets. Anyhow, I will keep you posted. As you know, I mostly post uh, every day so you can see how the garden develops and you can see some honest gardening results. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.